Welcome to No Cover Comics. Fantastic Four number 19, October 1963. Prisoners of the Pharaoh. Written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. Our story begins with Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Girl, and the Human Torch flying in the Fantastic Car in search of the thing. Sue suggests checking Alicia Masters' apartment. Upon arrival, they find the place empty, prompting Johnny to conduct a flyover of the neighborhood. The torch locates the couple just as the thing is preparing to enjoy a cigar sent by a fan. Johnny assists the thing by lighting the cigar, inadvertently burning it in the process. Once Mr. Grimm calms down, Johnny conveys a message from Reed, indicating that although it is his day off, Ben and Alicia need to get to the Baxter building promptly. Upon their arrival, Reed shares details about the visit he and Sue made to the Museum of Natural History the previous day. Mr. Fantastic had been researching a period in ancient Egyptian history that is not well documented. At the museum, he discovered a radioactive herb hidden among the numerous hieroglyphs, which serves as a cure for blindness. The thing's first two questions after hearing of a cure are, how could there be radioactive herbs in ancient Egypt? And how do we get there? Mr. Fantastic has no answer for the first. But as for the second, Reed reminds the thing of the Fantastic Four's first encounter with Doc Doom, where Doom used a time machine to transport them to the past. And despite all that happened, it still remains in Doom's abandoned castle. In that story, Dr. Doom kidnaps Invisible Girl and forces the Fantastic Four into going back in time to get Blackbeard's magic treasure for him. Read the Fantastic Four number 5 July 1962, Prisoners of Doom, for the full story. Wasting no further time, the Fantastic Four depart in their vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, heading towards Doom's abandoned castle. Upon arrival, they discover the throne room where the time machine is installed, still intact and operational. The team decides to journey to the ancient past, leaving Alicia behind to manage the controls and retrieve them in 24 hours. Immediately upon their arrival, they are confronted by soldiers clad in armor from an era that does not correspond with their current time. The Human Torch swiftly melts their spears, prompting the soldiers to resort to a mass assault using only their hands. However, they prove no match for the Thing, who effectively subdues them using their own armor. Reinforcements arrive on chariots, but Mr. Fantastic quickly addresses this new threat, while the invisible girl skillfully evades capture. It appears that the battle is won. Suddenly, an unseen force begins to drain the power from each team member, one by one. The Human Torch loses his flame first, followed by the Thing, who finds his strength diminished. Mr. Fantastic discovers he can no longer stretch, and ultimately, Invisible Girl becomes visible as they all lose consciousness. When they reawaken, they find themselves before the pharaoh, Rama Tut. To their astonishment, he speaks English and is familiar with their identities. While the others ponder whether they have traveled to the wrong time, Reed deduces that Rama Tut is the one who is out of place. Impressed by Mr. Fantastic, Rama reveals the weapon he used to defeat them, an ultra-diode ray, developed in the year 300. As Mr. Fantastic concludes that Rama is also a time traveler, the pharaoh shares his story. Having lived in the peaceful and uneventful year 3000, he found himself bored and, through watching ancient films, developed an envy for the thrilling careers of the Fantastic Four. At this point in the story, it is heavily implied that Rama Tut is a descendant of Dr. Doom. He was exploring the remarkable ruins of his ancestors when he discovered a partially intact time machine along with its schematics. He dedicated years to constructing a new time machine, shaping it in the likeness of an idol, the Sphinx. His intention was to leverage the superstitious beliefs of people from that era. By establishing his base in ancient Egypt, he aimed to utilize his advanced technology to become a ruler over all of humanity. However, when Rama landed in the past, his time machine sustained damage, leaving him stranded. 
The crash also caused injuries that resulted in blindness. In response, he fired indiscriminately at the locals with his ultra-diode ray, forcing them into servitude. They subsequently provided him with rare herbs, which he treated with radiation from his machine, ultimately restoring his eyesight. Since then, Rama Tut has ruled with authority. Seizing a moment during his monologue, Mr. Fantastic attempts a surprise maneuver to capture the formidable weapon, but he is not swift enough and falls victim to its rays, stripping him of his will and turning him into a servant. With Mr. Fantastic, the Thing, and Human Torch captured, Rama retains Invisible Girl as his companion, declaring that Sue shall be rewarded by becoming his queen. It's kind of a trend with this guy, trying to force women to be his queen. The Thing is assigned to a slave galleon to row, while Mr. Fantastic is designated as a lookout for the army. Rama Tut has the Human Torch performing as a court jester, juggling flaming balls on his back, while Invisible Girl is prepared to marry the pharaoh. From there we go to the thing on the boat, and this next part caused me some confusion for quite a while. In the heat of, the hotter than he is used to, Desert Sun, the thing changes back into regular Ben Grimm. For years I thought, why did Ben think he was stuck as the thing? He's always changing at random times. He just needs to learn how to control it. So I felt quite vindicated years later when Reed admitted to having the same theory during Secret Wars. Finding himself as Ben once more, he felt a surge of clarity, allowing his small hands to easily slip out of the thing-sized shackle. He swiftly escaped, leveraging his 20th century combat skills to subdue the guards with ease. He leaped overboard and swam to shore. Upon reaching land, he commandeered a chariot and made his way back to Rama Tut's palace. Meanwhile, while Rama was distracted by Torch's antics and creeping on Invisible Girl, Ben managed to sneak in and steal Rama's ultra diode ray. However, being inside the castle and away from the heat of the sun, Ben began to revert back to the thing and fell under the control of the ray once more. Fortunately, he used the weapon on Invisible Girl to liberate her from Rama's control before he lost his autonomy. Sue quickly grabbed the weapon and hurried to free her brother before Rama could intervene, her wedding gown hindering her ability to fully become invisible. Once Johnny was exposed to the ray by his sister, he confronted Rama, forcing him into a secret passage that Rama used to flee to the control room of his time machine. After Rama's departure, Invisible Girl targeted the ray at the thing before Rama's guards could mount an attack, allowing him to push through them with ease. Once outside the palace, the torch flew off with the weapon in search of Mr. Fantastic. Johnny located Reed, who was acting as a shield against Rama Tut's army as they clashed with another faction. Together, they returned to the palace, where they found Sue and Ben interrogating one of Tut's subordinates, who revealed how to access Rama's secret passage. Racing towards the passage's end, Mr. Fantastic advised them to be cautious of potential traps. As anticipated, when Johnny threw the gun through the opening, it was atomized. However, this setback did not deter the Fantastic Four. The human torch simply melted a hole in the ceiling. As they ascended through the opening into a new room, an image of Rama Tut appeared on a screen. Enraged, he vowed to annihilate them and unleashed a torrent of water into the room, intending to drown them. This posed no challenge for the formidable Fantastic Four, as Mr. Fantastic instructed the Human Torch to vaporize the water at its source. Safe and secure, they set out to investigate the Sphinx in search of Rama Tut. Reed examines the machinery, while Sue and Ben break through walls, and Johnny flies overhead, navigating the complex of rooms. It doesn't take long for them to locate Rama Tut's control pod, but their timing is unfortunate. Rama is prepared to depart and activates his pod to travel through time, leaving the Sphinx behind to intrigue humanity for ages to come. As the Fantastic Four search for the optic nerve restorative, 
they consider Rama Tut's connection to Dr. Doom. After successfully finding the cure, Mr. Fantastic realizes they must exit immediately. Just as they escape, the interior of the Sphinx collapses, destroying all of the Pharaoh's equipment and erasing any evidence of Rama Tut's existence in the past. They arrive at the recovery point just as the time machine's retrieval system activates, bringing them all back home. Initially elated, their joy quickly turns to disappointment upon realizing that the radioactive cure did not transport with them. Mr. Fantastic deduces that the radioactive nature of the serum is the reason for its absence and explains that the early design of the time machine has a flaw that prevents the transport of radioactive material. Although the group feels disheartened, Mr. Fantastic pledges that now that he is aware it is possible to create the cure, he will not cease his efforts to replicate it. They find comfort in knowing that everyone is together and safe. The story concludes with the thing expressing gratitude to the others for risking their lives to assist Alicia. As far as one-off stories go, this one might not be the most exciting or action-packed but it does give you a sense of how far the Fantastic Four will go for family. They'll go on a trek into the past like it's a Sunday drive. The heroics of the story visually favor Mr. Fantastic. While the thing's strength is impressive, we don't really see that strength tested. And with Torch, as he flies and throws fires, he's not challenged to use his full power or even be creative. Except for when he's making flaming amusements for the Pharaoh. Mr. Fantastic, on the other hand, has some of the most interesting visual panels in the comic. Him acting as a shield and rolling away a few panels later is my oldest memory of Reed Richards. And a point of reference I've used to argue Reed's durability for years. If you noticed, I haven't said anything about Invisible Girl. That's because this is from the years before they realized she could be way more than just an object of the bad guy's inappropriate affection and a damsel in distress who can hide well. Her single heroic act in the story being picking up a ray gun and pointing it at her brother while being chased. Overall, it's a decent little adventure that you don't need to know a lot of backstory to enjoy. Includes a formidable villain in the Marvel Universe, and gives you a sense of who the Fantastic Four really are. A family seeking adventure who just happen to be superheroes. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe.